Hello and welcome to the Sean Haggerty Show. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, Ian. Happy New Year, sir. How are you? Good. Yeah. Very well. Glad, just, to get, uh, glad to get Christmas over. Yeah, as much are as you? I enjoyed it. It's just yeah. uh, nice to be back into the routine and not eating fucking 8,000 calories an hour. I know, I know. I genuinely, I think I've had at least 500 Maltesers. Do you know, like individual Maltesers, not packets? Or we got like Malteser truffle things that were pretty tasty. Yeah. A lot but more chocolate. What is in Malteser. What's in celebrations or heroes? Uh, they're like, they're, they're uh, I think classes celebra- Maltesers, but they're different, aren't they? Yeah, they're like oval shaped. Uh, not the classic. I know, I know. Classics are the best. Mm, they are. Favourite chocolate? I like a double dagger, you know, something yeah. you can get your teeth into and wrestle with. But the uh, big manly bar. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Remember the the Yorkies and they were billed as being like this yeah. whole big man I'm not thing. for a woman, yeah. Yeah, I doubt they do them anymore. And if they do, I, I'd imagine they've changed things a I bit. I know, I know. God, some of the I saw an advert someone sent me a link to recently, and it was what was it? It was for Bloomfield Shopping Centre in Bangor. Yeah, and I don't know when it's from, but it is the most racist thing you've no ever way. seen. Really? Yeah, it's like a uh, an Asian tourist. In right. uh, Northern, and he's at the Giants Causeway and all, and the tour guide showing him about, and he's like, "When we go Broomfield, and it's just like, and it's, is it a local person putting on the accent? Don't know, could be, because that makes it ten times he's, worse, doesn't he's it? He's definitely like of Asian. Where did you find origin. it? YouTube. I think Jordan Robinson sent it to me actually. I wonder, could we find it? Ah, uh, do you want? Know I'm recording here, so I'm not even be able to. Yeah, well, just I'll send you the link. Yeah, will you? Yeah, please. That'll be, uh, <laughs> that'll be interesting to watch. Beautifully racist. Yeah. I would imagine the person who has put it, if it is on YouTube, the person who's posted it is trying to fucking out them. Oh, He's trying to like ruin. Yeah, Bloomfield. it's like, how was this yeah. ever acceptable? Like a couple nurtured the whole shopping centre together and then they had a bitter divorce. And yeah. then she's like, I'll fucking show him. <laughs> she probably even met it herself. <laughs> Doing the eyes and everything when <laughs> oh, she was fuck. saying it. Yeah. Trying to be as racist as possible. I know. Uh, but yeah, thanks for coming down. I appreciate you. You're from Belfast, aren't you? Yeah, well, from Crumlin originally. Oh, but Crumlin. Uh, lived in Belfast most of my life. Like, so, yeah. East Belfast now. East Belfast. Yeah. yeah. Used to be, we only moved there about a uh, couple of years ago. So was it Rosetta, which I miss because it's just Hadley for everything. Like, yeah, but very close. Uh-huh, yeah, uh, you've got... Are, is East Belfast as good as what Andrew Rand makes it out to be? He doesn't even live in East Belfast. Does he not? Well, not really, no, he's... Not Nagoni, Hollywood. It depends who uh, he's talking to, I think. Right, right, okay. But, uh, oh, no, it's that on. Like, I mean, there's um, there's a lot of good things in East Belfast. But when you grew up in Crumlin, like, it's... <laughs> East Belfast. Yeah, exactly. Disneyland, yeah, it's <laughs> like flipping Manhattan. <laughs> yeah. But, uh... <laughs> That's funny because my missus is from Dunedin in New Zealand and right. we've been together for like 19 years and she just kept going on. She was like, oh, Dunedin's such a shithole. It's so boring. There's nothing to do. And the first time I went there, I was like, you've been to Crumlin, look. Mm-hmm. This is much better. <laughs> and this was New Zealand? Mm-hmm. Is she? Does she have a New Zealand accent? Is she yeah. New Zealand born and raised? Yeah, she's got a funny little New Zealand accent. So and What uh, brought her here? Uh, she was travelling. And um, did you she, meet her traveling? No, well, so her sister lives not too far from here, actually. Right. So she came over to visit her sister and then met me, and she was like, I don't need to go any further. <laughs> She's fine, Mr. Wright. Exactly. The place to be, isn't it? I know. Do you know what? We, me and Diona spoke recently about uh, like my kids. My youngest son is 13, uh-huh. about, about to turn 14 next week. And we basically have four years here yep and then the world's our oyster we can move to anywhere in, in, within you know europe probably yeah, because yeah, yeah. they're going to be in university then i have three older boys uh-huh. and they're all going to be scattered hopefully in universities around europe or the world or whatever so it kind of opens us up to be like right we don't have to stay here in lurgan so we can move somewhere else and then we were thinking about it and we were like i don't think we would move out of the north i don't know if we would I know. leave here or leave this yeah, island I'm i think the same, it's like um, it, it, it's great when you think about it. I know it has its wee shitty moments and some shitty people. But so does that. Everywhere. But everywhere does, uh-huh. yeah. And it's it really is fucking lovely. Yeah. Uh, well, it? like we we lived in Edinburgh for five years. I got what a job spot. and moved over there, two thousand and five, and then we came back when my son was born. Mm. I like Edinburgh's class, mm. but I don't know. There's something about it. It's just 
it wasn't a very easy place to, to meet people. So like both of us mm-hmm. had full time jobs and like weren't really involved in any extra curricular activities other than going and getting pissed in the pub. <laughs> but um okay, I've, over here, like it's it gets a hard rap from people, yeah, but it does, it's not it. bad. There's nothing like, wrong with it. No. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, did Santa come to you? He did indeed. What'd you um, what'd you get? I got a nice watch that I'm not wearing. Um <laughs> Why did you show me that one? <laughs> <then>? <laughs> <laughs> Just to prove it. Um, no, I, uh, I've got a big deck, and then you get out. And it's like it's not mine. So <laughs> it's, at home. it's a spare one that I strap on sometimes. Um, yeah, so I could just got a few bits and pieces, like, and is this the watch where you're like, I'm going to Kirkavan? No, see, so this is the, the watch that back in the box. tells you how many steps you take and everything That's else. What mine so I'm like, yeah, I yeah. need to fucking yeah. get the finger out again. Um, I, have a, I have a decent one as well that has like the only got it engraved for me when our daughter was born. It was like to Daddy from Winter, love you, and all this on the back of it. And I was like, I would rather wear this because it counts my steps. It means if I'm out like training or, ah, or something, yeah, yeah. I just click it in the way I Do go. Do you use that for stand up as well? Does it vibrate or anything? It doesn't. But I was speaking to Dave Elliott. We did Copeland about a month ago. Uh-huh. The, the, the that looks distillery great. gig is lovely, and he was saying like him and a couple of other comedians have all got these Fitbits where you just literally click it now uh, and you set the time and it yeah, this is the on same. Your hand. Like so, it just yeah. vibrates after. What makes that? Uh, Polar. Might have so. to give myself something. Ah, oh, it's it's a great watch. Yeah. Like I have a, but, I think uh, it's Garmin. Yeah, it's Garmin. Uh, but same I mean, sort of thing in it. It's pretty much just for for exercising. Yeah, do you know what I mean, doesn't so, really do much uh, else. For Christmas, I got that. Also, randomly, my missus got me a belt making workshop. Um, the owner got me a stool making workshop. Oh really? Yeah, I make it must be the thing this year. Do you? <laughs> <laughs> you don't keep them there, do you? <laughs> um, no, I. Uh, I'm actually looking forward to that, but it's, yeah. it's fucking like eight hours or something. Mm, mine's like, about eight hours. It's like nine to five, long. I think. And it's the day of the comedian's boxing. Oh, is it? So I would imagine if I'm like carving stuff, my arms are going to be in bits. Yeah. So right it's enough. good training, but I would rather have had it like a month before rather than on the day. Yeah. Well, I mean? you'll have an excuse if you lose. You'll be able to say <laughs> fucking sawdust on my eyes or something. Yeah. Let's make something up. Yeah. But uh, so are you, are you a leather man or what? No, what belt I don't know. Why, she, she had a look at a belt on my trousers and be like that's fucked, and then mm. she thought of that. But rather than ban one, you can fucking make it. Yeah, own. but <laughs> the thing is, it's like a belt that cost me about two quid because I only use it from work trousers, so mm. it's not important. But mm. that'll be nice to do it actually. Yeah. Is Have it? you done any? Like workshops for no, I've never done a workshop, and I'm really looking forward to this one because there was a few workshops in the past that I was looking at. You know, like um, not maybe workshops, but courses and stuff Aye. of like uh, wilderness and survival and things. Uh-huh. I'd be big into all that, and I, I love it all, and uh, especially wood and working with wood and wood making. But yeah. then I I hate like when I go into something and I'm starting at ground level. Yep. I can't bear it because I want to know everything. I want to be the best. I want to try my best. I want to work my hardest and I want to be as best as I can be. Yeah. But when you're a beginner, a newbie starting out, it's so hard. Uh, well, so I did hard. like a DIY joinery course about two or three years ago. But How long was it? I think there was about 12 classes or something. It was through mm. um, Belfast Met. But the problem was that's when COVID hit. So like I was going in useless in the way they... Mm. What's this? Is that a hammer you call that thing? Like, and <laughs> you, you're no idea. So you sort of got into the swing of it, and then yeah. all of a sudden they had to cancel all the classes because of COVID. And then we came back in, did about another two weeks, cancelled again. COVID um, again? Yeah. I so they kept getting. They were sort of told because everyone's at like workstations in quite a big room. Mm-hmm. You know, you were able to keep distant, but um, now that got knocked on the head. So. Excuse uh, the pun. I made a wee, I made a wee table, <laughs> which is yeah. adequate. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I, I, I'm not going to say where it was in case this isn't legal or it's classed as stealing. But I was out near the lock somewhere, and I came across this wee island. I was having a wee paddle on my boat, right? And I came across this wee island, and there was perfectly cut logs, like proper tree trunks, oh, aye. and they were cut like perfectly, and they were just lying on the ground. And I put one in my boat and brought it home, dried it out for a couple of weeks against the radiator. And then varnished it and polished it down and then bought legs off Amazon and it sits like about this high now off the the ground. Yeah, yeah. And it's lovely. So rustic and modern. Do you know what type of wood it was around? Tree. Tree wood. Tree wood. Uh, Yeah, a trunk. 
All right, that's, that's all I know. I'm a landscaper, like, and uh, so we would do a bit of tree work and take all the logs back to our yard and mm. split them for firewood. But oh, class! There's, yeah, yeah. There's some very attractive logs that I've got mm. my eye on. Yeah, <laughs> things that you want, like holes in them and all. Well, you can... <laughs> there was a big like oak one that similar to that, but probably a bit mm. like I don't know about two foot and. Uh, my kids had it as like a step up onto their trampoline for ages. Class. Um, mm. And then I took it back. So we were moving house. So just fucked it into all the other logs back at the yard. But I miss it. It's a great yeah. log. Do you have it? <laughs> it's a great <laughs> log. <laughs> I've had a wee memoriam up here. We R.I.P. Oh, God. It was, <laughs> favorite it was log. beautiful. What did you call it? Larry the log? Jeff. <laughs> Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what was I going to say there? Ah, I was I was going to say something there, but you you did Andrew Ryan's garden or something, didn't you? Or you went yeah, up to Hassan right. one I, day, yeah. So what did you do? Uh, just your I was bread just and butter, isn't it? Landscape. I, I. Yeah. So it was just a big tidy up. Can't go into too much detail, you know, because yeah, you know, client confidentiality. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just don't go under his patio. Yeah, I, exactly. Yeah. Um, no, I was just completely overgrown. So, and then uh, there was bits and pieces of stuff that were redundant in the house that had just been piled up beside a shed so yeah just took a load of stuff to the dump for him as well happy days that's good that's yeah good. Do you, do so i think he's getting a bit of he's getting a fair bit of work done to it i think at the minute the the garden he's well, he's got someone lined up to come and do decking for him but it's you've got to you. wait for about a year and a half uh, before anyone's free like it's shy isn't it like you want something done like we're we're looking at a new kitchen and you're talking Three months minimum. Yeah. Uh, Whereas we want someone in tomorrow. Aye. Uh, just stays a whole Doesn't kitchen. happen. Not a bit. Not anymore. Anything. Since COVID, isn't it? And it? Well, that's it. Since COVID. That's I don't know if it's a backlog or what. Like, that we get, and he's like, take your pick. Tradesman would be like, oh, it's COVID. Oh, it was the sewage canal blockage. Oh, it's Ukraine. And he's like, yeah. none of it's true. <laughs> but, like. And the price of everything, too, skyrocketed, hasn't it? Like, the price of wood. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Like, we, I would buy logs or, like, just you know big fucking bags of logs Aye. and they're the, the logs are about eight quid i think and i went to buy coal about six weeks ago uh-huh. and the coal had like tripled in price it was 18 pound a bag and That's i was Thunberg. like so i phoned my brother he has a forest out the back of his house and he says like there's a few sort of trees that are leaning over that uh-huh. are quite dry but off the ground and i was like let's go out and i brought my chainsaw he brought his two of us went out and fucking two or three hours later at a full thing of logs sweet packed the car and brought what sort of chainsaw have you got um, a moving one. Oh, fancy. <laughs> I've just got a wee plastic <laughs> Fisher Price one. It's crap. Um, I bought him a wee handheld one for his birthday last year and um, I borrowed it on him and I think I broke it or I thought I broke it at the time and nothing was working. I was trying to cut through just wee branches. It was just this wee... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was trying to cut and cut and cut. And I was Is all, it like a two-hand one or one of the just wee... Just a wee one-hand pruner, one. A wee, oh, yeah, like a wee so pruner. Apparently yeah. they're where accidents happen the most. Is that right? Aye. Because I would imagine people get them because they are afraid of trying the bigger one. Yeah. So they probably hold them and use them in fear. So uh, it probably makes them feel worse. Yeah. Or makes them more anxious or more nervous. Um, One of my colleagues cut into his calf muscle with a chainsaw. So that must have been the end of November. Putting up a big like 25 foot Christmas tree. And it goes into like a sort of metal socket. So he yeah. had to shave it into the, the right shape. Um, but fuck. Nasty. I wasn't there. When we got back to the yard at finishing time, it was like like the trailer that it had the tree on. It was like something out of a horror movie. And then the seat of his van when they took him to A and E, you so, wouldn't even think it's blood. It looks like paint. It's so vibrant red. Jesus, that's bound to be dangerous. Like like life and death almost. Well, do you know the thing is, it, it's because it was a wee job, right? And he, mm. you know, when you're doing something big, you're taking all the precautions, and you know, yeah. It was like, honestly, a 30 second job. And he was like, I'll just fly through this quickly. And um, I, that's like when he got to the hospital, the doctor was like, have you tried to stitch this yourself? And he was like, no. And they're like, what, what the fuck's all this? And they realized it was like the the thread of the material of his trousers was just like mushed into <sighs> the, the muscle. So yeah. that's horrible. Wasn't it? Oh, no thanks. It's real. Anyone who's squeamish right now is fucking vomiting everywhere. This is. I know. Yeah. Well, the best, best uh, injury I've had in work is kneecapping myself. Which yeah. What'd you do? Tripped on a branch. <laughs> Got <laughs> kneecapped by a distant branch of a tree, mate. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, that was. Still use that joke? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's the brunch. Never made. Brunch is a good pun, isn't it? Oh, there. Right. Yeah. Exactly. That's class. Uh, speaking of um, limbs and blood and guts, I watched the Banshee of Inish Sharon or Inish Sharon? Is it? Inish Sharon uh, last night. Uh huh. Have you seen it? No. It's really, really good. Do you know everyone really I've good. spoken to has said yeah. them? It's um, so silly at times and really quirky, but it's. I, I really enjoyed it. I came away from it almost a wee bit inspired to write a movie. Oh, really? Yeah. I don't know if it's because it's an Irish film or, uh-huh. or what, but or because it was so... Like, movies in my head, if I was to write a movie or a movie idea, uh-huh. it would be 300 million budget, whereas this is probably 2 million budget, uh-huh. and, it, and it looks beautiful too. The cinematography's... So believe. Second and on. Like. See, everyone I've spoken to about it has said it's brilliant. Yeah. And then my dad... Uh, my mum and dad looked after the kids so we went out one night last week the next day my dad dropped the kids back and he's like what's that band she's in is sharing it's fucking terrible and I was like what you're the only <laughs> person of, but yeah. then saying that he's half deaf like so oh is he yeah probably didn't have happen. subtitles on yeah I, I watch everything now with subtitles on do you yeah do you know it's it's kind of good because it uh you pay attention more mm. like, you take more in and it find if you're watching like some French or whatever you know, when the subtitles are on, you're not glancing at your phone or... That's it, yeah, yeah. That's probably what it comes down to, you know, is that you're, you're paying attention more. Aye. Uh, because in this day and age, it's impossible to hold someone's attention for any amount of time. Yeah. What? Like, <laughs> good one. But podcasts in the future, it, it's like football highlights. Yeah. Football highlights now are two minutes on YouTube. Oh, no. Where it used to be match of the day where you'd get 10 to 15 minutes of football highlights uh, yeah. for, each, for each match. Yeah. Nowadays, it's a quick fucking TikTok video uh, 30 with seconds. dubstep music over the top of it. I know. And, you know, I know. effects and filters. But and even like, um, sometimes with, with football or rugby, like if I know what's on like YouTube or the BBC iPlayer or something, when, you know, it used to be I would have recorded it. Now I just come in and watch it at like double speed or triple yeah. speed to yeah. see... Yeah. And I thought exciting happening here. Like, it's going to be so fucking stop start. I know, I know, I know. Nothing Nobody happened. has time for it anymore. I know. Matches are going to be like 15 minutes. It's going to be like a wee quick tournament or something Aye. on a Saturday afternoon. <laughs> like you're under 10s. <laughs> Winner stays on. <laughs> That's what it's going to be. The end of the day, whoever's playing, whoever wins the last match is the winner of the Premier League. That's what it's going to be. They should have televised that game we had against Lurgan Sonicside last year. No, they shouldn't. <laughs> It was terrible, wasn't it? <laughs> it really was. See, to be honest, though, I now play for Sunnyside, and it's the only match we've won. Oh, really? Like, since that there, Because yeah. I thought they were fairly handy, but then so we did were I. really and shit. It, yeah, do you know what, though? See, in training, the lads are, are brilliant, but then when it comes to a match, I don't know what happens. It just doesn't It just doesn't work. Oh, just, right. Something's not right, and we could beat every game. Now, I, I've only played maybe half a dozen matches. Uh-huh. I got to the point where I was like, do you know what? I, I just can't give up my weekend afternoons anymore. Yeah. I do like family time and, you know, I've uh, gigs yeah, yeah, that yeah, night yeah. and whatever. And I just I just don't want to do it to myself anymore because I did that when I was growing up, you know, and I played football until I was maybe 24, 25. Uh-huh. And then I just got to a point where I was like, realistically, I'm not going to make it. Um, Liverpool's not going to come looking for me. Do you know what I mean? They're not going to watch a match and learn. Well, not with that attitude. Not sure. with that attitude. <laughs> I know. That was that was my, the beginning of the decline of the downfall. So, um. I ended up then, I was just, I just give it all up. And when I came back around and I started playing matches again, I just hated it. Yeah. I hated it. Like the lads and all were brilliant. Everybody's, and then some brilliant footballers and football in minds. There's lads and you're like, how did you not go really far? Do you like really far? Yeah, because yeah, yeah. They're fucking brilliant. Aye. Uh, brilliant. But I know. What, what happens? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, it's, I know it's weird that one. Just, I would, would have played rugby like, and it was the same thing. There was boys mm. that were just like, fucking unbelievably good mm. compared to everyone else does it just but hit the paints or does it get to a point where you just like i know a guy grew up in a small town and you almost have that small town mentality where there's you just feel like you're not going to get out the other person escapes and i think it's it. it's probably a bit like comedy actually people mm. you know who go after all the gigs they mightn't be the funniest at the start and then it's just the consistency and everything else mm. and like you know making things being proactive, looking for gigs and all. It's probably the same if you're sitting in a hometown, you know, like fucking Lurgan. Um, nobody is really seeing you in the shop window, maybe, you know, whereas if, That's you, it, yeah. if you tried to go to Scotland and play for a team or something, you know, you can maybe get notice a lot quicker. Make make your own luck, innit? Are you a sportsman? Are you... Nah, not, 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 a, not as much anymore. Like, I'm historically a Liverpool fan, but... 
Nice just one. over the years, I I just I watch like match of the day sometimes, but mm. I don't know when. But we'll watch the World Cup final. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which was a belter, like. But, yeah, uh, it was class, wasn't it? Yeah. Like I was, I, I remember watching it, being like, I'm, I'm witnessing history here. See all the things that were happening, and uh, seeing your guy Martinez doing the, yeah, with, the yeah, with the glove, yeah. and then Messi. You see someone got a tattoo of that? Yeah, yeah, it was brilliant. <laughs> yeah, but that was uh, it's typical lad Bible stuff, isn't it? Yeah, it's always somebody. Oh, I completely it's somebody. look. Is your mic dropping? I feel is like it? you're. Which is, I'm gonna have to invest in new mic stands. These are brand new, but I could just slouch. <laughs> Aye, is that alright? I think it's alright. Yeah. If, if it sounds alright to you. Uh, rest in peace, Pele. Yeah. Are you a fan of the I, big man? Uh, what I did like about Pele was he always seemed very modest. and Every, Everyone that's talked about him since he's died has said he was just a gentleman. He, uh, was, he was lovely. Whereas you'd imagine Ronaldo, a lot of people would meet him and be like, he's a prick, he's a ball oh, bag, I, you know. Like completely. But Pele seems like he was, he was the real deal. But then I would say Messi's probably reasonably humble. Mm. But it's just like when you look back. And then you look at the fucking prima donnas now, like pre Maradonas, and well, <laughs> pre Maradona was Pele. Pele. Well. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, I did a joke the other night. We did uh, PBs at the Moy. Uh-huh. Uh, my gig that I run, I think it's like bi monthly. Yeah, and I went up on stage, and now the Moy, I I've I've emceed. We've maybe done about ten of them now in the space of about eighteen months, and. Every month, it's like they love a bit of rough. They love when you slag them. They love all this. But it seemed to be a completely different crowd this year. Right. The, this Christmas month? one I... just passed there. So I went and I had a, like planned all these post-Christmas jokes about like what I got up for Christmas and my dinner and things like that. And I made them like a wee bit extra dark because I knew they would love them. But when I started telling them, people began to seem like they were really offended. Oh, and then there was one of the jokes I told and I was like... Uh, what was the joke? I says, the girl, I, I was in the middle of doing like a Christmas set. I had Christmas music in the background and stuff. I was sitting on a wee stool just reading my jokes out of my joke book, all Christmas themed. And I says to her, pick a subject and I'll tell you a joke based on that subject. And she goes, um, doctors. And I was like, Christmas? Okay, coming right up. <laughs> and I told another Christmas joke and I said, um, what's worse? What's the only thing worse than getting a Lynx Africa gift set for Christmas? Being Pele's family. <laughs> and this was like the day after Pele died. And everyone was like, Oh, oh man, I as if they just came from his wake. I was like, "What? Fuck off!" This is the Moy. Do you know what I mean? Pele's not from the Moy. He's from maybe Brazil. they were all Viagra fans, you know. And Pele so? was the the brand ambassador, <laughs> wasn't he? <laughs> yeah. I heard something as well about there was two brothers in Germany who started a shoe company or a trainer company or whatever. Uh-huh. Did you hear about this? No, Adi Dassler. No. Yeah. Yeah, there and were two brothers. One I, of them had Adidas and one, one of them Puma. had Puma. I, yeah, and what they did was they both agreed because Pele was the best, like the top athlete in the whole world, uh-huh. that there was no point in trying to put each other out of business trying to get Pele. But one of them undercut the other one and I think it was the World Cup final. They approached Pele and they says, we want you to wear our boots in the final. Like, don't be letting on and stuff, but, you know, here's money. But to undercut, like making it so public they says what we want you to do is go out to the halfway line when you're about to kick off said to the referee can i get two seconds i need to time my laces and he bends down to tie his laces and the cameraman was paid on the slide to zoom in oh, to his really? boots, and he was wearing puma boots oh is that right and it started a whole big fucking war but, with the two brothers apparently they fucking hated each other the, the two like brothers i think the they end, were yeah. both adidas yeah. weren't they and then i think so one of them broke away and yeah. formed puma i uh, but the, i can't remember where it was, I heard it. I think it might have been, uh, you know, Russell Kane. Yeah, yeah. He's got a podcast called Evil Genius, mm-hmm. and I think he did one about Adi Dassler. Right. And right. I think, like to this day, the town they're from in Germany, mm. like people are real loyal to one brand or the other. But Jesus. it's like you know, it's like sectarianism like over here. Yeah. Isn't it? That's it's class. like I used to work for C R Smith. Remember the sponsored yeah, yeah, yeah. Celtic? Celtic and Rangers, and they. I so they were the first shirt sponsors for Rangers and Celtic. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, they did the, the deal at the same time. Mm-hmm. And then I think after like two or three years, you know, it was up for negotiation. Rangers went to McEwen's Lager. Celtic stuck with C.R. Smith. Mm-hmm. And McEwen's Lager and C.R. Smith lost half their customers. Because, because like, of... I, because half of Scotland was like, oh, not bad from those fuckers. Like, 
So that's Jeez. why Rangers and Celtic had the same sponsors for years. Mm. Um, that's fascinating. Really. Because people are like, it's it's not worth it. Like yeah, you know, yeah. companies didn't want to get involved with one if they weren't doing the other. Mm. Fuck, that's class. Yeah. It's, it, it, all this stuff you just don't know about. Like it's fascinating, isn't it? It's yeah. It the makes you want to go stuff. and study more and learn more. And yeah, yeah. But then yeah. I, I just get to that point where I'm like, I'm too busy. I have stuff. To, I, have to, I have to rearrange the garage. Oh you know fuck! I mean? Just I can't I, be doing all that learning shit. I cannot stand learning. Like you know, yeah. I'll retain useless bits of information on facts, but mm. in terms of sitting down to read a textbook. I can't do it. No. I have no attention span, especially now. I feel like I had no attention span in school. Uh-huh. I remember sitting down for exams and being like, I I do not remember being taught this. Yeah. And everyone in my class like scribbling Aye. away. And I'm sitting there being like, we're, we're, I have to write about volcanoes. And I'm uh-huh. like, I don't even know how fucking, they're just mountains with fire in them. Do you know what I mean? That's all you need to write, isn't it? I should have just wrote that. A star. Yeah. Should have done that and then just fucking kick the table over and just get up and just walked out of the room. So don't um, worry, I'll make in you still someday. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I remember one time we were in an exam and it was like definitely silent and everyone was sitting scribbling away and my mate was sitting in front of me and I was like just looking around me. I think I'd finished or I'd just give up or something. And he was looking around him too and he looked over at me and he winked and then he just went... <laughs> In the whole fucking place, <laughs> erupted. All those plastic seats and the as teacher well, yeah. fucking teacher stormed down. He's all, "Who did that?" And it was the most I have laughed in my entire life. Oh man, it was amazing. Farts are the best, aren't they? Yeah, like, they're they the really best. are. Like yeah. you know, I mean, it's even the fact that you know a, a six month old baby is just like <laughs> high five. <laughs> my daughter, the day after Boxing Day. My daughter hates when she poos. She tells you straight away because she wants it clean. She wants it away from her. She hates it. Yeah. So she can't sit down. She can't do anything. Straight away, she's like, poo poos. And I think that's a telltale sign that they're ready to go on the pie. Aye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, my daughter came over to me the day after boxing and she was all, poo poo, poo poo. And I was like, right, come on over to the other living room. We'll get you changed and stuff. Lay her down on the floor. Uh, got the nappy out. Got the wipes out. Got everything ready and stuff. Pulled her trousers down. Undid her nappy. Opened it and there was nothing there. And she went, ah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like what the <laughs> fuck you're 20 months old how do you have this sense of humour it's just unbelievable yeah it's like uh full you see there. Fraser Rob runs a thing in the black box I think it's once a month um called Stony Face where right. all the comedians go up and you've got 10 minutes each but at the start of the show someone from the audience is picked to sit on the wee sofa beside the green room stage and keep a straight face so I can't remember like if they manage to keep a straight face the whole way through the show, they get like, I don't know, 30 quid Pants or something. Or some, yeah. But if the comedian makes you laugh, they get a tenner or whatever. So I was right, doing right. it. I was on last and it was Paul Burns. You know Paul Burns? I think so. Uh, he used to do a bit of stand-up and uh, he's a good lad. Like, But as soon as I saw he was the stone face, I was like, no I'm going to fucking get him in oh, really? 10 seconds. Like, <laughs> and uh, I did. <laughs> But during the week, I've been trying to think, you know, because I didn't know who was going to be the stone face. And I was like, mm-hmm. it's like fart. And I said to my kids, I was like, see if you've got a good fart coming. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> let me know. right? And I took like an audio recording of every fart I did that week. And the kids, and then it got to the end of it. And I was like, I made you laugh after 10 seconds. But, you know, I've recorded these farts. So it would be a shame to let them go to it. I just played them into the microphone <laughs> and you could see like half the audience just sitting there going what the fuck is this and the other half the audience going that Loving was a it. good that was a very good one <laughs> <laughs> I could practically smell that one <laughs> farts are the best yeah and they're fucking they're never not funny oh, especially I'm... like in church and things like that yeah. and times when like in school, you're getting a bollock in. I remember one time we were in the on the school bus and everyone was fucking about. So the bus driver just turned the bus around and went back to school. And the like the principal or the vice principal, I think, came onto the bus and he was fucking livid. And he was screaming at people and this fella did a big fart and the place just fucking erupted and the atmosphere changes. <laughs> and it makes the one person even more angry. Like yeah, the, of course. The person in charge. But everyone else is just like, this is the best day of my life. This oh, I. It's great. Um, or... What's even better is like when an elderly person does one without realizing, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and everyone else is just like, 
fucking <laughs> court or hold their granny. I'll tell you this, I used to work in a nursing home, right? And I used to do night shift and there was three of us on, so it'd be two um care assistants and one nurse. What were you doing? I was a care assistant. What a fuck fair play to you, man. It was it was tough, but I I actually loved it. Do you know what it was? I came from working in the water sports centre. I, I was a water sports instructor. Um, we trained over the winter and worked over so the summer. So you were used to getting splashed? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, I splashed back. <laughs> and it got to the point where it was fucking freezing, obviously, because of where we live. And I was like, I need a job that's just indoors. Just get me indoors. Uh-huh. I, I, I hate this. I'm freezing all day, every day. I'm soaking. Joe, you're in wellies, uh, you're in wetsuits, and you're yeah, just, yeah. You, you're soaking all the time. I know all about it. Yeah. And I got to the point, especially uh, you being a, a landscape gardener or whatever and uh, I got to a point where I was like I just need inside so I was working inside and it was lovely and warm heating's on 24 hours a day you're lovely and warm and uh, there's one night me and the nurse used to fuck about and like mess about with each other and make each other laugh and she was very stone faced but she was always really lovely with me and one night I was like she was working down in the medicine room doing all the medicines for the next day and I crept down and I was going to scare the life out of her because it was the middle of the night and I was all this is going to be fucking great and I just got to the door and she just went <laughs> <laughs> and I just had to cover my mouth and fucking sprint back up the corridor without her hearing me. <laughs> it was it was brilliant. Yeah, I brilliant. remember my brother had a similar story about uh, I don't know. It must have been when he was like sort of twelve or something. And my mom and dad were going to their their mates for like a dinner party, and they couldn't get a babysitter, so they took my brother along. Don't know where I was. Probably just abandoned me. But uh, my brother was just like sitting drawn at the kitchen table or something they were all eating in a different room and then uh, my dad's mate that owned the house like obviously had to sneak off for a wonder for <laughs> and apparently just came in and just shut the kitchen door and was just like <laughs> and then like my brother just started laughing he was like oh fuck <laughs> <laughs> didn't think anyone else was in the room ah <laughs> oh, they're the best they're the yeah. fucking best do you ever download those sleep apps and it records noises you make overnight nah I tend to be out like a light but Diona was saying she laughs at all in her sleep yeah yeah Diona yeah. does I mean, Diona woke up one night crying laughing and then she's there's times she wakes up as well genuinely crying ah, too. She was saying, and I have to wake her and I'm like here you're you're having a dream are you shut okay shut up you freak <laughs> <laughs> and she'll ah you're supposed to be dead what's going on well that happened that's how me and Diona ended up discussing it because Whenever I did her podcast in the One L Studios, up at the top, it reminded me because I'd had a dream. Must have been the end of November, and it's the first time ever that I've like woken up and screamed. Really? Um, but I remember, like, so I used to live in a flat that was a mm-hmm. very similar layout. That you went up the stairs, and then where the studio is for the do the owners podcast, there's a wee short landing. Yeah. on a small door and yeah. that's how it was in my flat no where I lived off the Lisburn Road and uh, I just was having this dream that it was in this house and it was either the flat or 1L Studios mm. and uh, like I knew someone had come into the building but I was meant to be there on my own and then I saw the door shut in my dream I was like fuck someone or something is in there that's after me like yeah. so it was in my dream I was trying to shout at it to come out Jeez. and uh so my missus said I was just laying there like Aah! and then she was like Ian and when she put her hand on me and said Ian I just fucking Pretty bolted sure. upright and screamed you hear of all these people and they like murder people in their sleep and stuff like that Aye. that's like what What do you do I know that there's like laws and stuff isn't there there's I, I don't know how it works like legally but it's a scary kind of feeling Aye. to think that anyone is capable of that yeah. At any time, do you know? Yeah. Like, imagine waking it up and just being told here, you've literally just fucking set a family on fire. I know. Just in your dream, or and, the, Joe, like, and then how did you defend that? You're dreaming. I know, I know. Like, like what happens? Like, are you done for manslaughter? Are you? Do you get? Do you get off with it? Like, what? what I, I, I don't. I can't comprehend what could actually be done about that. I was listening to a podcast recently, Scotland Yard Confidential. It's called. It's good, but mm. it covers all these big jewellery robberies and murders and stuff but there was one in France but it was boys from it was a father and son from uh, England and I think that's the son got off by saying he, he killed the dad in his sleep despite oh, yeah. the fact that like you know it changed his inheritance the yeah, week before yeah, or yeah. something yeah I, I think things like that are when they're fishy 
Aye. But when something happens completely out of the blue, where you know, like you've you've never had a spat with your neighbours or nothing's ever went wrong, your street's lovely, everyone gets on, yep. and then you've just broken in, and fucking murdered three people in their sleep. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Like while you're sleeping, it's I don't know. See, because you're not supposed to wake someone too when they're sleepwalking. Uh, you're supposed like to just leave them and let them sort of wake up naturally, or they they I don't know if they walk back to their bed or they just lie down where they are or what. Uh, but weird. See, the, I was in uh, boarding. <laughs> boarding school fit? in Belfast and uh, there was a story about like someone getting up in the middle of the night trying to sneak out for something mm. and uh, like the, the most senior like boarding master who was a bit of a bastard like <laughs> he came down the corridor like two in the morning the guys so he pretended that he was sleepwalking and like the guy like the teacher just like sort of guided him back up the, his bed and all and like like <laughs> Got him into the bed and then the guy just burst out laughing. <laughs> he was like, you're fucked. That is fucking brilliant. But that's, I only remember this a while ago as well. So I would have been 14. It was like 1993. And uh, so we were in this like dormitory that had like individual cubicles where you would have had two bunk beds. So four people in the cubicle, but there was no ceiling. So you could all just shout over at each other. and. Right. Used to, if someone had the same stereo, like you could climb up on the wall and pause it, and they'd be like, "What the fuck's wrong?" <laughs> <laughs> Just being dicks. But someone, my cubicle had the fire escape in it, mm. and like someone fucking took it apart, like and dismantled the alarm. So people used to go out the fire escape in the middle of the night, hop over the gates, and go out and get pizzas and stuff. Jeez. But there was one night I was just fucking asleep, and then the next thing I was aware, the lights were on, and just like heard this man's voice and looked around there was a fucking REC guy standing with a gun and I was like what the fuck so some of the boys had gone out to get pizzas and then when they'd been coming back in they were spotted looks like they're and they thought they're breaking into that school <laughs> um, so the fucking REC guy standing there he was like what is that and they're like oh we're just getting some pizzas and he was like alright we thought you were breaking in right, enjoy your pizzas lads and they're like Jesus Christ. it's 2 in the morning they didn't give a, a fuck about like that's unreal you know what was Child this? welfare. Secondary or? school, was it? Yeah. Yeah. What, first year to fifth year? First year, upper sixth? Upper sixth, aye. Yeah. So and did you stay over the whole time you were in yeah. the secondary school? Aye. So I, the first couple of years were uh, not fun, but it yeah. was actually really good crack. Like, you see, um, sort of after the second or third year, there was like a sort of new guy took over the run of the boarding department and he just made things a lot more relaxed and mm. fun. Class. Um, but I it was just like even people that didn't enjoy it that I'm still in touch with go, would say oh there was never a day that went by that you weren't pissing yourself about something mm. like you know just a bunch of fucking teenagers living yeah, together like yeah. I suppose it's almost like university but even earlier isn't uh, it so that, and you're stupider yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. That, that would be class is it still a thing today do people still board there's, there? uh, there's still schools like I think Campbell College and friends in Lisburn maybe doing. That's unreal. But but saying that like Jordan Robinson, he he was boarding at the same school. He fucking hated it the whole time. Right. But um, you know, do, you, he, do you know why he hated it? Did he say? Just because he was shaky and rotund and got bullied a lot. Like. Right, right. <laughs> he was shaky. Shaky. I, you know, yeah. Jordan's got a tremor. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking hell. But that's uh, mad. But uh, that's something I would love to have experienced. But do you get do you get to go home much? Are you, are you there? Is it like term most time? Weekends, I. Most so, weekends, I. So um, sometimes you would have had to stay in on the Friday night, and other times you would have been allowed to go home on a Friday afternoon, and then come back in on the the Sunday night. Yeah, but, to get ready for uh, Monday or whatever. I. But even the way like I managed to manipulate it, like I, I convinced my mum and dad to write a letter to the head of the boarding department to say, look. Ian's old enough and wise enough. He gets the train from Belfast home sometimes and all. So to save us having to come into Belfast to pick him up, like just let him go, let him sign out himself. So I, I had fucking mum and dad convinced I was staying in on the Friday night, and the masters convinced I was going home. And I went to like a house party on Jeez. the Craig Road, and it was the first time I think it was properly pissed. And mm. yeah, there was a lot of shenanigans that night. But what age were you? Fourteen. Like, I'd just turned 14, and then the morning, sort of got up, walked back to the school, and my dad showed up to pick me up. And uh. I was, so, like, just as the car arrived, I was getting there, and I was like, well, let's go. Let's not hang about, because in case anyone asked any oh, questions. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. 
fuck, that's class. That's perfect. Um, any any New Year's resolutions? Nah, not really. Just uh, do, you, do you not do that? Probably do more drugs and yeah, anal. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I um, I think naturally when it gets to January, I just sort myself out after all the overindulgence at Christmas. Yeah, like. yeah, yeah. There comes a time where you just have to go right. This is an opportunity to where enough's enough. No, it's just like your straight body is going seriously fucking <laughs> put the quality straight away. Look, like. I know. I, what I, about I, you? Um, none really. It just, I, I'm doing you know what I'm going to do. I'm going to make decisions that are right for me. That's what I think I'm going to do because a lot of times I'm, I'm a, a people pleaser and I'm sitting out and I'm like, oh, I, I'm going to go and meet this guy for a pint because I told him I would three weeks ago and oh. I won't let him down. But then he's probably at home being like, fuck, I'd love to cancel this, you know, or rearrange it and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think one thing I'm going to do this year is just kind of, if I don't want to do a gig, I'm just not going to do it. Aye. Or if I want to, you know, go and do something or, you know, like even there's times when I, I'm demented in the house and I'm like fucking just kids and responsibility and everything. And I won't go for a run or go to the gym because I feel like if I go, then Diona has to do it all on her own. Yeah. Whereas at times I think I need to just go here. I'm going to nip out for an hour and she'll be like, that's dead on. But in my head, I'm like, oh, it's just going to be too hard. And do you know, I just over evaluate and overthink yeah, everything? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I think I'm just going to take a chill pill pretty much. Uh huh. And just relax a wee bit more and just do things that are that are right or best for me, I think. Aye. Uh, yeah. Well, let's get a look after number one. So Big time. This Spend the, winter sitting there needing a the shit or needs her nappy change. You're like, daddy's watching the match here. <laughs> It'll do it full time. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like a World Cup match. There's fucking 25 minutes added at the end. Funny you were saying about, you know, if I don't want to do a gig or whatever. You see they had that... Uh, charity fundraiser in the black box on new year's eve so the mm. two shows yeah and like i'd been asked to do it and i was like justin i actually it's been a couple of years since i've just gone to a gig and not been on the bill mm. so just went i said look thanks for the offer but actually i think i'll just come down and have a few drinks but for plenty was there from both shows so i arrived late to the first one just as mickey was finishing his set um but it, I see when when you're not performing, you see everything differently. Like, because mm. I mean, I always try and pay attention to the comedians. But if you're gonna be on after them, or if you have just been on, you're sort you can't help sort yeah. of evaluating everything. Yeah. Like, that's what I says to Dave recently. I had Dave on the podcast last week, and we were at the comedians staff uh-huh. too a couple of weeks ago, and you just talk to people in a completely different exactly. way. You don't talk about work as much, and I, you you just it's almost like everyone's a different person because as you say you're either waiting to go on or you've just been on or yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. you're on later in the night and you've, you've one eye on the stage and you're trying to think of what you're going to say and how you're going to open and how you're going to close and I, you're trying to remember your material and it's exactly funny, the I, same it was Pete Giffen's birthday yesterday and I sent him a couple oh, of it? messages quoting his jokes like oh, and uh, he was just like fuck are you a super fan and I was like no <laughs> it's just I've never paid full attention to your set until <laughs> yeah. yesterday like, yeah but uh, it'd be uh, weird that just sort of watching everybody set without thinking about I, you being on or so what you're going to do. I used to live like a 15 minute walk from the path. So I would have gone down every Monday, like regardless really? of whether it was on. Mm. And uh, I think you can learn a lot from watching new acts and stuff, you know. Mm. Um, but how yeah, not, I, how not to do. <laughs> so, well, yeah, but sometimes you see someone who's just like, how the fuck is that their first gig? Like that was mm. amazing. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I miss like doing that on a regular basis, just go on the watch. Mm. Um, that's that's a good idea. I, I I don't think I've ever done that. I don't think I've ever. I, I don't know why. I don't know if it's because I never had much of an interest in stand up. I was never the biggest comedy fan uh-huh. growing up. It was only when I think I bought my dad a Peter K DVD. I think it was the top of the tower one, right? Black yeah, tower. I. And it was over Christmas and I was bored. I think the movies were all shite and there was nothing on TV. And I was just sitting on my own. And I was like, do you know what? I'm going to give this a go. And I put it on. I found it really funny. And then I think it just sort of went on from there. But even then, it was just dipping in and out. I was never a big Billy Connolly fan or Aye. Richard Pryor. Yeah, 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 all yeah. the lads now are like, oh, fuck, I love this guy. And Aye. all this. I was like, just no, I, I, I was just into more sort of silly stuff. And we sort of sitcoms. and I same here. Panel shows I would have watched. Yeah, yeah. Oh, shit. Um... I I'm I wouldn't be like a sort of stand up disciple in terms mm-hmm. of watching um specials and all on Netflix, but just going to the local gigs definitely 
helped me a lot when I was starting out, like mm. just watching yeah. everyone else. Yeah, it's it's a, I suppose it's a good tip for people as well. Starting out is to to watch as much comedy as possible, yeah. as well as perform as much Aye. as possible. You know, so I suppose that's a a good thing if anyone's watching who is maybe thinking of starting stand up or who has just started. A good sort of tip I think to give them would be to just watch as much as possible and Aye. not even on TV I mean live you know yeah. if you're so doing a club go to the one the month before you're on and I watch it and see like what it's like having gone to the pavilion and I think I'd done like two or three gigs and there was a woman on really nice middle aged lady but like not one joke landed mm. but you see her delivery like she just she, she just went on as if she was killing it and she was aware that she wasn't but mm. she didn't skip a beat like and her, her delivery and all was perfect but I'm like yeah I need to fucking get into that routine of yeah. not sort of yeah. do, you, do you have a set routine do you have like do you have a, a, a 15 minutes a 20 minutes a 5 minutes a 10 where you can just go right I'm doing this tonight and then you practice it a few times and then you go and do it Uh, pretty much yeah do you? Like it, all, it all depends how familiar I am like if it's stuff that I know is tried and tested but uh, I usually go for what Dave called it a shit sandwich you know when new material you just <laughs> you get something that works middle. and put the new yeah. stuff in the middle and then revert yeah. back I usually just learn all my material and then just go on stage and uh-huh. just see what happens and yeah. just sort of direct what I'm going to do myself based on how the audience are reacting yeah. or how I'm feeling at the time or what I can even remember because uh-huh. my memory's so bad I have all these prompts all over the stage and that's why I do the keyboard stuff and the tablet and all because it's like if I'm telling jokes like I, I've read loads where I think people have like a 13 minute or 15 minute attention spam when it comes to watching one liners. Yeah. So after that, after 13 to 15 minutes, they start to go, oh, this is his setup. So I know where the punchline is going to be. Joe, you kind of catch on a wee bit more. Preempted. So it's nice to sort of break it up with different kind of bits that you do that are outside of doing jokes. So that's why I came up with loads of stuff like the keyboard and the tablet and the blow keyboard and just other wee bits that have developed over the years. Yeah, but yeah. most of them for me are just because my memory's so shit. Excuse me. I can't maybe remember what joke I'm going to tell next. What, so so like, do you have I'll prompts? Like on, yeah, yeah. Right, right. Yeah. So I used to, do that. The, I used to get like life. a freezer label with bullet points hmm. and stick it to the back of a bottle of beer and then be standing right. on stage with the beer in my hand. Yeah, um, yeah. But I actually found it more distracting than just mm. yeah that it's it's the worst thing you can do because then your brain is never going to train itself to remember what's next uh-huh. if it, if it, you make it exactly. too easy for yourself yep. then you're just always going to do that because yep. it's just too easy i remember doing it was me sean walsh and your guy he was like a poet rapper mark something from here from england and we did a big gig in Mandela Hall for, I think it was Bulmers. And I hadn't gigged in about six to eight weeks. And I remember I was like, I was quite nervous. So this was about nine years ago. And I was quite nervous. And I was like, what am I going to do here? I need to write my script and put it somewhere or my bullet points for jokes and set it somewhere because I haven't gigged in so long. I'm going to forget them all. So I traced around my shoe I was wearing these old Adidas trainers at the time and there was like a bit that goes to like the plastic comes to here yeah, yeah, yeah. and then it's all this bit in the middle Aye. and I traced around it and then drew the thing on a page and wrote all my jokes in tiny writing and then sellotaped them to the front of both my trainers and I remember Sean Wallace being all like what the fuck are you doing I was like just I, I, I need to remember my stuff Yeah, but even it's like some comedians who write it on their hand Nine times out of ten, you don't look at it. Exactly. But it's just, as long as you know it's there, yeah. you'll relax a wee bit more and you'll be like, okay, Aye. things go tits up. I'll but just look down. It all depends on the venue as well because, you know, if you're doing the Empire it's, or Laveries, it's different from mm-hmm. doing, you know, other shows where you, it's fine to just walk up. In fact, I've, I think yeah. I even did it in Laveries in October, so I just went up with a sheet of paper and... Yeah, and it's know. fine to do that. Aye. Yeah, yeah. I've seen you with the, the clipboard before as well. Yeah, yeah. Most of them are just because, <laughs> like, even I have a wee notebook as well, and sometimes I would do like Halloween jokes or Christmas jokes or yep. Valentine's Day jokes, and they're just a collection of 20 to 30 jokes that are about that specific subject. Yeah. And rather than me learn them just for that one week period of me doing gigs over Valentine's or whatever it is, I'm like, I'll just write them all in my book and then I'll sit down, play a wee instrumental and just flick through them and uh, just read them off. Do you know, so because when you say Christmas, the domain. J- Christmas jokes, you know, my favourite of your Christmas jokes. What is it? I've put the tree up. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I told that to my colleague, right? It was, uh, we were putting Christmas trees up, funny enough, and uh, honestly, he, like, two hours later, he was still chuckling about it, and he was like, I cannot wait for my missus to turn around and say, well, we'll put the tree up. Like, he was just fucking foaming at the mouth, like... Class. I, I, I put that into our we did Home Alone there, Joe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the show I'm sure you were speaking to Diona about it or whatever. She probably mentioned it when you were there. Uh-huh. And uh, that was one of the jokes that I put into like what we had was it was a guy called Gavin McAllister and his family lived on the Malone Road and his parents were going to the Maldives for Christmas. Right. So he was on his own, but he was uh secretly they thought he was off being a doctor and learning in university in England, but he was actually trying to become a comedian. Right. So okay. he was coming out on stage and he was doing all these like one liner jokes to uh-huh. the audience and one of the jokes was that joke and it always got the best reaction Man, every time I love we that. went to watch and it. Your like, uh, your alopecia joke as well was one of my favourites. Yeah. I did that one time about two months ago at the waterfront supporting Patty. Uh huh. Patty McDonald and this woman came over to me after and she goes I have alopecia and she like had this full wig on uh-huh. and she was all don't worry though the joke was funny John I wasn't offended uh, and I was like but no that's if you're offended it's because you're hearing the word alopecia because it's not it, it's a pun do you know what yeah, I mean it's, it's not yeah, it's, it's not like, me going fuck I people with alopecia I had someone come up to me after a gig in, in Derry back in about February I think it was and I, could, I was aware when I was on stage that these two fellas were sitting completely steaming and the whole way through the night they were sort of chatting to each other and looking at their phones and everything and he came up to me afterwards and he was like I was actually quite offended by what you said and I think he's probably heard me say Fenian or yeah. something and that's what like triggered him yeah, yeah. but he's not listened to any of the rest of it like yeah. um, but what people don't realise is that being offended is just a feeling it's like feeling happy. It's like feeling sad, feeling offended. Yeah. There's, there's no law. There's no, you know, it's not uh, illegal well, to offend someone. Yeah. It's just someone's feeling and someone choosing to be offended with something. Aye. But I would say most comedians are like so, so careful not mm. to be punching down or yeah, saying anything course. offensive. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, sometimes things come out in the spur of the moment, but people know that everything that's said on stage is not there to make fucking political movements or to start these wars it's you know because then you wouldn't be a comedian you'd be a politician or you'd be uh, you know you'd be what do you call your fellow robinson online who's fucking oh i tommy robinson spurting yeah. all the shit you know on yeah, social yeah, media yeah. Yeah. whereas exactly. you're, you're there to make the audience laugh but, but when i did the moy on saturday night i had to tell people towards the end i was like don't be leaving here going that offended me or that offended me i was like this is this is comedy yeah this is a safe place for comedians to say what they want an audience to laugh at things they wouldn't laugh at in yeah. the staff room at work or you know things like that it's like in our job too it's like it's don't be offended you stupid cunt. yeah <laughs> you fucking fat ugly <laughs> bastard yeah. but th- but that's it it's like th- this is what makes us one of the best jobs in the world because you can't go into your work colleague on a monday morning and go fuck up damien you ugly I know. cunt i know you just can't do it but Man, you can do it in stand-up it's you see in cost like because before i moved into um gardening like you know as i said i worked for cr smith i was uh I was an estate agent for about right. seven or eight years. And you're constantly having to apologize for mistakes or things that aren't your fault. Mm. You know, when I, like, C.R. Smith, you know, they're like a glazing firm. There was times that shit went wrong at the factory and I was selling to like builders and joiners. And um, they'd be like, well, what the fuck am I going? I'm building this house and, you know, the conservatory's not ready and that's totally fucked everything. And it was because some dickhead at the factory had forgotten to process something. Mm. But their point of contact is you. You, you represent so the company. So you're sitting there just going, oh, look, I'm, yeah. I am so sorry. It's like, it's not my fucking fault, but yeah. you've got to take it on the chin. Whereas in comedy, that's the beauty of it. It's that's just it. like... You're self-employed. You're yeah. on your own. Yeah, Funny, yeah. I, have you ever seen Paulie Taylor, English comedian? I, I did so. The Empire with him earlier in the year. And he has this bit about the beauty of being a stand-up is if you know someone heckles you you know you can just turn around and go fuck off and then he compares it to like other jobs and being a yeah. mime artist and all it's not <laughs> i can't do it justice but i'll send you the clip it's just oh, is it on youtube or somewhere is it i think he shared it on instagram months Class. ago right. but I, it was killer. one of those ones where i just watched it over and over again like it was so good brilliant um class what's your what's your favorite routine or favorite sort of even favorite comedian in general who 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 would you watch like if they had a new special out, you'd be like, "Fucking get that on." Kevin Bridges, like, mm. um, I mean, yeah. The, as I said, like, I'm not really a disciple in terms of like American comedians. There's a few 
like, because I'm always listening to podcasts and all the merch. Do you know Mike Berbiglia? Mm-hmm. I, I love some of his stuff. Mm. Um, but in terms of sitting down, like, there's, yeah, you know, I sort of appreciate, like, I had an argument with Jordan Robinson about this. Like, I love fucking Tim Vine. Like, just yeah, yeah. the stupidity, but yeah. the simpleness yeah. of of his it. jokes like that's it yeah that's, uh, uh, that's what made me I think write one liners that and when I first started writing stand up I was like I'm I'm so nervous I need the audience to laugh as soon as possible see if I'm building something up for two or three minutes uh-huh. I'm going to get more and more nervous and more anxious here hoping that there's a payoff yep. or you know so uh, I you need to get a laugh straight away on. I just need to go bang please laugh uh, if you're not going to laugh you'll laugh ten seconds later yeah, or yeah, five yeah. seconds later uh, and that's I think what got me into doing one liners uh huh but I, yeah, I, I'm the same. I see things online all the time. I've probably mentioned this in a podcast before where people post online going, the worst jokes are always the best. And you're like, no, they're the best jokes. Why are you fucking saying they're the worst? Yeah. That's it. Doesn't make sense. Uh, you know, they're, they're the best jokes. They're, uh, it's fun. Well, my kids are now like 12 and 10. And, and they're classed as dad, dad jokes now, oh, aren't well, they? I, I just like really enjoy saying some, some cheesy fucking That's line. It. Just silliness. Yeah. And, like, my son knows that I'm being a dick, but my daughter, like, she, she's just like, oh, fuck up. Whereas my son's like, oh, yeah, yeah. He sort of, he feels the pain, but he yeah. appreciates, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, my, my kids are at the age now, too, where I, I do wee puns or wee jokes with them, and they they really appreciate them now. I, Whereas before, everything just went over their heads, or they were just like, duh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas now, it's like the properly... I think because they have TikTok and stuff now and they see all these dad jokes going viral all the time. Uh-huh. So they do, their minds are changed a wee bit where they do understand them a lot more now. Uh-huh. So uh, my, my youngest son, 13, he's he's hilarious. Like he's, I say to him all the time, like I'm like, are you going to be a stand-up? Are you going to write jokes? Because he just tells me perfectly crafted jokes. I say that to my daughter once or as twice well. Like, a week. Yeah. And I'm like, write these down. Do, uh, do something with them. Do you yeah, know? yeah, yeah. You'll fucking you'll kick kick yourself down the line if you go on and do whatever you're going to do, and you've always had these funny bones that you just do nothing with. I you know, it's fucking I don't know. Well, that's the thing, actually. Kevin Bridges' autobiography he talks about um, people who have wee jokes, but they never give stand up or any sort of mm. performance a go, mm. and they're like frustrated comedians for the rest. So it's like someone who's a bit of a character, really, like they're an insufferable prick. It's yeah, like, mate, yeah, you're yeah. here to fucking fix my boiler. Don't be giving me 10 minutes of shit. Yeah. Um, I met a fellow one time that used to teach me and he goes, I must get your address off. You have six or seven pages of jokes in the house. I'll post them out to you. And I'm all, no, you're all right. Don't, you know, <laughs> yeah. I read all my own stuff. What what, what do you want me to do with this? I can go on Google and fucking Google uh, exactly. 100 million jokes. Yeah, yeah, do you yeah, know yeah. what I mean? What, what, what are you going to send me? Like, it just, it's Dude, weird how people you, who Can you get them oh, for me? Yeah, yeah okay, <laughs> no, I've got them in the house. <laughs> just don't do the ones I'm going to do next week. You send them a Christmas card every year. Any more jokes, man? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the material. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thanks a lot for coming on. I really appreciate no, thank it. Thank you for um, having me. Um, Nice day for it. Yeah, it's a. I was I was actually going to taxi this morning, saying mind the roads because it was quite icy. It was indeed. But yeah, uh, you I got here on your street. It's all fine. Is it? Yeah, yeah. It's all credit. Yep. Thank you very much for coming on. Um, anything you want to promote? Anything you want to plug for we? Uh, I know? will. Some. You're doing a solo show. Yeah, not until the end of March, so I'll announce it soon. But still waiting on. Did the, I ruin uh, that on you? What's that? Did I ruin that on you? No, no. I've said it on the last few podcasts okay, I've been on, okay. but I still haven't got the fucking artwork ready. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> what, what's it called? Have you, is it like a, a show? Is it you doing a, a It's actually going to be... I'm trying to do something completely different, and it Cabaret. could go very... Well, yeah. Um, burlesque. <laughs> burlesque. Um, <laughs> no, it's uh, it's hopefully going to be a sort of multimedia thing with video clips and... Class. Um, different than my, my usual stuff. And Instantly, st- when I hear that, I'm like, yes, and then you don't have to remember as much. <laughs> oh, but it's fucking terrifying as well. Yeah, it's yeah. just like, See, I find wrong. this hilarious, but yeah. you know, it's like, that's it's like it. starting stand up all yeah. over again. Like, I know. There's times where I've had to show videos, like at live shows and stuff, and I'm like, this is mad because I post a video online and I don't hear the laughter. I don't see yeah. what parts people enjoy. You're just kind of hoping for the best. You're uh, just like, if anything, people will have a wee giggle and move on with their day. Yeah. But when it's in a show, you're like, 
there's so much more resting on it. It's I like know, this but has to... shit sandwich. Just like yeah. halfway through, revert back to <laughs> my old material. <laughs> yeah, we're here. Best luck to it with it. Thank um, you very much. Where, where about you doing it? Sunflower on the 24th of March, I think. Sunflower is a night. great place, isn't it? It is. It's a great venue. So. Yeah. yeah. Best luck yeah. to it. If I'm not gigging, I'll try my best to make it down. No worries. Class. Uh, Ian Thompson, everybody. Uh, I'm Sean Haggerty, Sean Haggerty Show. Back next Thursday with another episode. And enjoy your week and Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Cheers.